In this video, we're going to really dig into those WCAG standards. So the standards revolve around four main principles. WCAG says that digital content must be perceivable by the human senses, operable in a variety of ways, robust, meaning that it should work with numerous browsers, devices, and assistive technologies, and it should be understandable by many different types of people. So we're going to take a deeper look at each of these principles. Perceivable means that your content should be available to multiple senses. So in other words, if a person is blind, then they should be able to use another sense to learn about the content. Generally, perceivable means your content can be read, seen, and heard. Operable means that your course can be taken using a mouse or a keyboard. The navigation is logical. You don't have flashes or time limits. Your users should also be able to quickly determine where they are in your course. A menu is great for that. So for understandable, we're thinking about a few things here. Um, the text should be readable and it should be scripted in a professional grammatically correct format. Your features like buttons and selectable items should be consistent that will improve the predictability of your course. Navigation should be simple to avoid user errors. And when a person makes an error, it should be easily corrected. Your content should be robust. This means it should be compatible with different browsers and assistive technologies. So a lot of the features such as focus order, ARIA labels, and keyboard shortcuts are considered to be robust features. There's three levels within WCAG. The first level, A, is the most basic. So these are the features that most content and web creators can implement with relative ease. So some of these standards are like closed captions, focus order, and keyboard shortcuts. The next level, double A, can be achieved by many content creators, but will probably have an additional cost and will require more time and effort, so more training. Some of the extra features include contrast ratio, text resizing, ARIA labels, and menus. Triple A is the strictest and most difficult to achieve, so it includes pre-recorded sign language, increased contrast ratio, an attached glossary, and the use of tooltips or a help section. So lots of extra costs there. These levels are cumulative so that if you meet the double A level by default, you've also met the A level. So now we're gonna take a look at two websites that are super useful for understanding what these standards mean. So here's the first one. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of information here on the table of contents that you don't really have to look at unless you want to. But first we have perceivable. And so when you go here, it has different standards. So um, the main standard is text alternatives. And then it gets very specific. This is the actual criteria here. So non-text content. And then it goes on to explain many, many details. Let's just jump down to um, audio description. So here it doesn't have quite as many details, but it has um, clickable links that give you definitions. So if you're not sure what something means, you can find out. And then over here in very tiny, almost inaccessibly small text, they have two other options for you. One of them is understanding. So this is how, how can you understand this better? And so when you go here, you're going to get even more details. You're gonna get examples and additional resources. Here's techniques. Sometimes they'll even tell you what a failure looks like. But you also have how to meet the standard. So we have understanding, which is gonna give you like more definitions and more details and then how to actually meet the standard. So when you go to the how to meet, this is called the, the quick reference. And if you go to the top, you'll see it's the quick reference guide. And so you can go down and, oh, this is where the failures are. This is what I really like. So, so here's, it gives you a quick definition. You can get the full description again, and then you can see the techniques and failures. So it will tell you what it looks like to fail. And I love that because it, it will tell me if the example I have meets that. So those are two websites and those are linked in the resources here in the course that you can use. And it, 
you know, just to go look and double check. Next, we're going to look specifically at, at the criteria that apply to storyline courses. Thank you.